So the first month of Patreon, all I can say is, wow, um, I am completely blown away by the response to the page. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed and making the first month absolutely amazing. As I mentioned in the last video, I had no expectations and no idea how this would go and I'd be happy with only, if only five people subscribed and I've ended up with 16 people subscribing and only 10 pounds short of my first target of 250 pounds a month, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I really had no expectations at all to what it was going to be like running a Patreon. I mean, I've only done it for about a month, but what I can say, it's been absolutely amazing. It's been giving me such a lovely positive focus. I was really not prepared for the amount of gratitude and joy I would be feeling every time somebody subscribed. Also, the amount of support I get from all the posts that I put up and their level of engagement is just absolutely amazing. So thank you so much. What was really nice is that the artwork that I create is already loved before I've created it. And it's really given me a sense of community having this page. This is the first painting for the bird series. The way that it works at the moment is that I have six spaces in the top tier, which is 35 pounds per month. After six months, that person gets an original painting. So it equals a down payment plan. I spend quite a lot of time researching reference images. Having an interesting subject is half the secret behind a great painting. The main issue I have with commission works is that usually people give me rubbish low quality photos. It makes me so nervous and uncomfortable painting it because it can be quite difficult to see a clear vision and to create a balanced composition. Currently, because I don't have that many subscribers, I'm giving each patron a choice of five images. All the spaces of the highest tier is now taken. If you do want an original painting like this, please contact me and I can put you on a waiting list from when the next round is up in six months time. I had a great time painting this hummingbird and actually the most difficult thing about this painting was the flower. I'm still wrapping my head around painting with acrylics. The most difficult thing I find with it is to create a smooth blend and I had to try a few different techniques and different kinds of paints with different textures to get the flower looking flowery. So let's backtrack to when lockdown lifted back in April, because it's been about a month since I released a video, which kind of reflects on how busy I've been since the easing of lockdown. So a little backstory for you. In the past, I've mainly made a living through selling my art at markets. Now there's several reasons why I stopped doing that regularly, mainly, it's too much work for too little money and too little creative freedom. So my long-term plan is now to get Patreon up to a point where I can potentially live of it alongside my online sales and occasionally markets and events. But anyway, I'm not quite at the point where I can live comfortably of my online sales and occasional commission works. A lot of months I am at the moment, but a lot of months it can be quite sketchy. I'm not quite in a place where I want to take the leap to just rely on my online sales for income. So last year, in the effort to stop trading regularly at markets, I actually started a part-time job. Now this is the first part-time job I've had since 2012. Now I actually work at the market that I used to trade at and still am trading at. I manage, rig and de-rig the markets. And I have to say, as far as a part-time job goes, which would be equal to maybe working in a bar or a coffee shop or something like that, it's actually pretty good. I feel really lucky to have found something like this, which still enables to be, to mainly have a focus on my art. When I leave work, I leave work. I don't take it home with me. Mentally, it's not taxing. Physically, however, it does give me a really good workout and it really encourages me to stay fit. Plus, I feel really lucky to be working on that team with so many lovely people. However, coming out of lockdown, I was not prepared for the amount of workload. I mean, I've been running regularly and I was running up to sort of 15K, but I was, my body was not ready for the extra workload. I actually led quite a comfortable life during lockdown. I had so much time to be creative, to take care of myself, do meditation, work out, absolutely everything, and have a social life. Which is now why I'm also super excited about getting Patreon back up because I want life to be like that again. <laughs> so this last month I feel really overwhelmed trying to juggle having a part-time job, getting my creative work down and doing a market at the same time. It didn't help that I've been ill on and off for the past two months either. I thought I had tonsillitis, not exactly sure what's going on with my body but I did get better miraculously after two days of taking antihistamines when two courses of antibiotics didn't do the trick. So it was probably allergies, who knows. 
As a side note, it's times like this where I feel particularly vulnerable as a self-employed person because I just don't have the time to be ill for long periods of time. And I often don't actually give my body enough time to rest and recover. So basically, I did most of my shifts and I did a whole market weekend and I felt absolutely awful. But it's not just that, it's also the fact that I just don't get paid if I don't work, as is the case with every self-employed person. So you just end up working through it just in case you have a bad month coming up. And yeah, it was just kind of feeling that situation and that vulnerability of like, I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with me. It's nothing serious, but I don't know how long I'm going to be feeling crap for and how long, you know, I'm potentially going to have to cancel work for. And it was just that vulnerability of feeling those things that made me feel quite a lot of anxiety last month. Alongside feeling quite overwhelmed about the workload that I had to get through, that I literally just couldn't do. I do think we should take positive things from cer such circumstances. And this last month have really reminded me of my long-term objectives and goals, which is to create a life where I don't just do something that I love, but I also create circumstances where I can thrive physically and mentally. And this includes creating a work life where I can afford to take time off for both sickness and holiday, which Patreon is absolutely a part of, and it's making me feel so excited about achieving this. And now for a short segment of Art Supply Unboxing. Okay, so I might have done a bit of an impulse buy here. Though I have been wanting to buy this for years, but I haven't really had a good enough reason to do so. But hopefully I think I do now. There's just something really special about buying a new medium and a new set of paints. I feel this sort of childish joy. And look, they're all so pretty. This is a 36 colour acrylic gouache set from Turner, which is a Japanese company. Supposedly they are very high quality, high pigmented and light fast, with water resistant properties. And of course I had to try out the new paints as soon as I got them. I'm really feeling the need to create some more fun and easy paintings at the moment. I think it's because I'm working on quite a lot of rigid compositions, which is also really rewarding in a different way. But there isn't that in the moment creative freedom that I sometimes long for. There's a few different ideas I'm playing with. Firstly, I'd like to start some sort of sketchbook, where I draw things that are more for my imagination, as well as just getting used to working a bit faster and not be so precious about my drawing. At the moment, I'm having a real fear about starting a new one because I don't want there to be any, not exactly ugly sketches, but like half-finished projects. Like, I feel like if I start a sketchbook, I have to like complete every drawing. So I think I just have to get over that little compulsion. Secondly, because I feel such love from my Patreon page, I really wanted to give something back. I got really excited about the idea of having some giveaways and I wanted to create something cute and colourful as a sort of extra reward for joining. I'm also trying to be more creative in finding ways to get people to join. So I don't just want to create great value for money, I also want to create a sort of exciting and hopefully inspiring page. So this is the first time painting with acrylic wash. I made simple bird illustrations to try it out. It got a little messy in places, but the beautiful thing about gouache is that you can just paint over it. Unlike with watercolour, where if you paint over the white areas of the paper, the highlights are forever gone. I was really impressed by the fullness of the colours. They were all really vibrant. I can get a little bit obsessed about blending sometimes, so here I really like the idea of not blending too much. So working in solid colours and layers and then getting the shading with subtle colour mixing rather than blending on the paper. It was also really nice to work in a more non-naturalistic way and use simple shapes and lines rather than the detail that goes into realism. The painting ended up being a prize for a competition on the Patreon page and once I reach the first goal post of £250 a month, I am going to do another one. It was really fun working in gouache and I'm really looking forward to seeing what this medium is capable of doing. There's also some other ideas that I'm playing with. Um, I have this thing about guinea pigs and I really like the idea of making small motivational guinea pigs, mainly just because I think I need them for myself. As I mentioned, I had my first market weekend back this month. This is me packing prints and doing preparations, by the way. Currently, I'm training once a month at Canopy Market. I'm not going to lie, I've barely touched my market store kit since December when that lockdown all of a sudden came into force. I thought three and a half days would be enough to get it all together, but I actually never got around to even taking stock of the t-shirts. I have been meaning to 
to make some changes to my store for a while. Um, I started out with the store being mainly focused around t-shirt and apparel. Now that I'm switching my focus mainly to just making art, I want to redesign my stall to reflect this. Normally it doesn't take quite so long to prepare for the market, but because I was making some new stuff, it did take a bit longer than I expected. Now I really like designing things and I love thinking about what kind of experience I would like people to have when they visit my stall. At the heart of everything I make, I would say there is a want to make people feel inspired and to shift them into a creative space. I really want them to fall in love with the art and to find something in it that when they look at it, they get a sense of feeling excited and engaged with life. I like the idea of creating a space kind of like a gallery shop. Galleries are spaces where we enter to get a specific experience. You leave behind the chaotic outside world and everyday life to be immersed in a new world. It's a space to be in the moment in. And that's what I wanted my soul to start reflecting. Now I do tend to get a little bit carried away with stuff like this and in wanting to create something exciting, probably go for things that just takes a lot of time to make. One of the main changes I wanted to make was to create a small space where I could showcase some original work. So this is me creating a solution to this. Part of the challenge of designing a market stall is also to have a kit that packs down well when not in use. So I wanted to have some shelves that I could pack down and dismantle when I didn't use them at the market. I had small pegboards and I had a loose idea for some removable and adjustable shelves to go with them. Usually I end up making stuff like that myself, but by some miracle I found some shelves at B&Q that was actually completely perfect and down to the last millimetre the right length for the boards. So here I am drilling new holes to the shelves so they fit the boards. I also wanted to introduce a new colour scheme to the stall. Before I've mainly just had everything white because it's simple and makes the work stand out, but recently I've been really vibing of some darker colours more. There's something about dark greys that I really love and that has a more luxurious feel to it, which I wanted as to reflect the new vision for the work and for the stall. I think for a market I am asking for premium prices quite a lot, so I want my branding to reflect this. The market store sign was also starting to look a little bit sad, but luckily I already had some vinyl graphics left over from a fair. I wanted to bring some original paintings to the market for a change. I currently have six more paintings available for sale and all of them needed varnishing. I use Gamvar Gloss Varnish for my oil paintings. I really like glossy varnish because it can really make the colours pop, especially the darker colours, even though the sheen can be slightly annoying when it catches the light. This one is also quite quick drying in comparison to other varnishes I've tried. I have lost count of how many times someone has asked me if an £18 print is an original painting. Honestly, I still have no idea how to answer that question after about six years of getting it. So I thought it might be nice to show off what an actual original looks like and also to give a bit more perspective on some price points. In an effort to up my branding game this year, I have got some certificate of authenticities made. In keeping with the darker colours, I wanted to add some gold foil to the design. It kind of reminds me of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's golden tickets kind of vibe, which it sort of is and should be. After all, it is a ticket to an original painting, which is something quite special to own. I might have gotten a little bit carried away with this stuff, but then that's just the fun bit of branding. I also got a wax stamp with my signature made just to add that little extra. Plus the wax is just so pretty. So this is a time lapse of the market store setup. The shelves, which I actually didn't try out beforehand, setting up the shelves was a little bit fiddly. I think I need to replace the nuts I used to fasten the shelves with with some wing nuts and also bring an electric screwdriver just to save some time. I cable tied the board to the market frame and that actually made the whole setup quite secure. The shelves also worked really well, they felt solid as well as looking great. I didn't have time to research getting new fabrics to cover the table and the back of the stall. I'd really like to get some fabrics that matches the colouring and feel of the boards, so I'll probably try and get that done not for next month but the month after. This did great on me a little bit during the weekend because I think new fabrics would just make the store feel a lot more thought through. I like the ease of use of my print boxes but I don't like how they cover up the frame pictures at the back of the stall. They can make the space feel a little bit busy but I'm not sure how to solve that without having to bring in extra stuff. 
This is the set I like from your print and art based store. However, I do still have a good few t-shirts left that I need to be able to display in a good way. And with the limited space, it's quite difficult to do this in a good way. I ended up hanging most of them on the other side of the store, which is kind of too narrow for me to sit there and for people to browse properly at the same time. But it was kind of a compromised and the best solution as far as this store setup goes. Overall, it was a quiet weekend and I really noticed that I made the right decision in deciding to not be a full-time market trader anymore. What's nice about having a steady income is that I was able to be enjoy being there much more without having to stress about how much money I was making, which has definitely been a huge issue in the past. It also enables me to say no to discount requests without feeling the anxiety of losing out on a sale. I think that also just makes most transactions more pleasurable and fun rather than putting so much pressure on them. I was feeling quite rubbish during the whole weekend, but overall managed to have a good time. I did get some painting in. Some days, especially the Friday at Canopy Market, can be very quiet, and I hate feeling like I'm just wasting my time. So I like to bring work with me and either do admin work or get some painting done. My next market date is the weekend of 18th of June, and I will be trading once a month for the next few months. You can check out my Instagram or email me for dates, and please feel free to come and say hello. So next week I will be starting the new artwork for next month's Patreon. If you want to see some in-progress shots, you can head over to my Instagram account, or you can, you know, subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> Even on the lowest tier, you also get access to the live painting stream, where you are welcome to ask me questions regarding my painting and business. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions.